Hi, welcome to Inno Power Conference 2022. I am Zanae Brooks, and we are here to talk about branding Black Indie. Uh, really trying to discuss how to attract and retain black people in Indianapolis and what role we can play. And when I say what role I'm, we can play, we as in individuals, organizations, government, um, city officials, all of that. So really looking to have an all-inclusive conversation. Um, want to introduce the panel. And I'll start today with myself, Zanae Brooks. I work at Cummins um, and Corporate Responsibility and the Foundation. I am also a member of many organizations within the city, uh, the Black Accountants, Indiana CPA Society, Leadership Indy, so very involved. I am, I consider myself a native of Indianapolis. I was born in Fort Wayne. I moved to Indy when I was 10. I left for a couple years to go to college, University of Louisville, and I came back. Um, I've never wanted to really live anywhere else in Indianapolis, so that is a perspective that I'm bringing to <coughs> Indy. Um, I feel like I've created a network, I know how to move and navigate, but I understand that there are still some issues that we have in attracting and retaining other people that look like me. So hopefully my friends today, we can kind of dive into some of those issues and come out with some solutions. So um, I'll have my friend Leon introduce himself and then we'll just go down the road. Uh, Dr. Leon Jackson, I serve as the Chancellor for St. Joseph's College. I also am the founder of the Diversity and Leadership Program a uh, program really catered to developing and creating um, uh, more black and brown and women executives in central Indiana. Um, I am from Indianapolis. I claim to be from Indianapolis. I was born in Anderson. I uh, moved to Indianapolis when I was about seven years old. Um, left for college, came back for a year, moved to Las Vegas for 11 years, uh, and then came back, and I've been back for about six years. And so that's kind of my perspective uh, that I'll bring to the conversation um, and look forward to talking with you. Hi, Brittany Porter. Um, I work for Eli Lilly and financial services there. I've been in Indianapolis for three years now, or close to three years this summer. I joined um, and moved to, I joined Lilly and moved to Indianapolis right after uh, completing my graduate degree in Washington, D.C. at Georgetown. I also attended Howard University for my undergraduate degree. I'm originally from Chicago, but spent most of my adult life in D.C. So looking forward to adding my perspective there as a transplant to Indianapolis and um, also as someone who's lived in some of the major cities in the U.S. Hey everyone, uh, my name is TJ. Uh, I also work for Cummins um, in our corporate research and technology organization. Um, as far as community engagement, um, I do support a few different things. A lot of the work I do is uh, through uh, our employee resource group called Cummins Black Network. So I do try to engage the community in that, uh, in that sense. Uh, so we do some work with you know, the Minority Engineering Program of Indianapolis. We do work with uh, NSB in Indianapolis. We do work with uh, Center for Leadership Development and a few others. Um, so do some work over there. As far as perspective, I am not from India. In fact, I am not from America, right? So I'm, uh, I'm an immigrant uh, who moved here. Um, and I moved to India about 11 years ago. Um, and uh, I, I bring the perspective of, of both the immigrant and, and someone who moved here uh, who also planned on leaving because I was like, there is no way I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. And somewhere along the line made the decision that I was going to intentionally integrate into the, uh, the city. And since then, I think I found Indy to be a very good place for me to grow and it's worked out perfectly. So I bring that perspective here. Awesome. Well, as you can see, I think we've got the basis covered here from different perspectives. I wanted to start off talking about the culture in Indy and um, for the audience, we've talked um, a couple times this week. And so if this is just a continuation of conversations that we've been having, but um, Leon brought up something the other day about I was asking and comparing Indy to other cities, and a lot of you have lived as adults in other cities. So how would you describe Indy's culture, especially when it relates to like black people? And do we have a specific culture for black people? Yeah, uh, again, to that, that point, uh, I believe that we don't have a culture here, and that impacts our, you know, how we, you know, where we go, you know, the music we listen to, um, the the things that that drive people here to engage with us in our city, um, and so, you know, the lack of culture creates other 
challenges and you know I feel like we're kind of this hodgepodge of of cultures we you know we get a little bit from this place and that place um, but the, the reality is we don't have a true identity and, and because of that we don't have the scenes that support that that culture and so that that gap creates this this need and desire um, again we, we talked about you know even concerts and things of that nature and how they choose other cities over Indianapolis the major stars the big the the, the big uh, the, 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 the big drivers, you know, the, the, the Drakes, the Beyonce's, the Jay-Z's, the Kendrick's, you know, these people aren't choosing Indianapolis, they're choosing Cincinnati and Chicago and Detroit. And so <clears throat> what about Cincinnati, a city that I think is, we're very comparable to, um, makes them go to Cincinnati over in Indianapolis? Um, and so that, that was, again, I, I just, you know, I feel like we don't have an identity and that, that impacts our ability to really create and, and, and sustain you know, things for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would have to agree with that. Just thinking about uh, the fact that I'm a transplant. When I moved here three years ago, it wasn't easy for me to build a network outside of my employer. Going to a bar, I consider <coughs> myself a very social person who will introduce myself to a stranger and say, hey, how are you doing? Hey, we are aligned as far as like things that we're passionate about. Let's go grab a drink. Let's have dinner or brunch or something like that. But going out to Mass Avenue to a restaurant or something, I didn't see people that looked like me often to kind of engage with and figure out what was going on in the city and what Indianapolis had available to me versus going to another city like a DC or Houston or Chicago coming off the plane and having a, a black community and uh, experience of black culture just by entering the city. So that's just my so, yeah, I don't think I can disagree with that because uh, I think whenever uh, Leon said culture, it, it really stuck out to me, right? And so for a couple of days now, I'm driving around really saying, what is the identity of Indianapolis? What is the identity of black Indianapolis? What can people look forward to coming to Indianapolis? And, and unfortunately, it's not there. That's not to say that there aren't people doing, you know, good work around the arts, around uh, uh, community, around music. There's actually a lot of talented people that I found over the years. But they, they are not the identity. There's nothing that's being done to say, this is who we are with respect to everybody, and this is who we are with respect to black people. Black people want to go to a place where they feel like they will be accepted, they will assimilate, and they will actually elevate and be successful. Yeah. How, where is that here? Yeah. Sure. And I feel like, I think when we first started having this conversation, as a native, like, I am a defender of the city. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I always get offended. And I'm like, if you don't have nothing to do, like, it's because of you. Like, I have all these <laughs> friends. Um, but then taking a step back, it's like, okay, I do have my own friends. And when we go places, like, we are the black people. If we didn't go, there would be nobody else there. Um, I think there are things happening now. There's the Melanin in May festival happening, and then there's um, Garden Party coming mm -hmm. up. We have Gang Juneteenth. Gang, just Juneteenth. So mm -hmm. I think there are things happening. Um, but for me, as a native here, I'm like, I know where to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we get other people, how can other people that are not from here build something yeah. like a network um, where they know where to go, or is it their responsibility, or yeah. is it somebody else's responsibility to create that? Like, how do we get to fill the void that we're saying that we have? I think um, I <coughs> would agree it goes both ways, but would you agree that those events and um, things that happen throughout the year are kind of few and far between? It's like almost when you hear about something happening, you got to jump on it, and then it's like three weeks or a month or so later there's something else it's like each weekend or you know a little frequent thing throughout mm -hmm. the month where you have the places that you like to go to like wind down wednesdays every third friday or second friday of the month like that's somewhere uh, an event that i like to experience mm -hmm. but i don't have my like go-to things yeah. that are happening yeah. that frequent and there's no common thread right i mean you go to these other cities these other spaces there's a common thread again that that culture piece whether it's the music or a, a, a type of dance, I mean, there's there's no 
uh, there's nothing that ties these these events together. So mm -hmm. there's all these one-offs. Like this is very different than this, and that's okay. But again, oftentimes when you're looking, when you go to a city, you're going for that for a certain scene, and we don't have a scene here that can carry us in in those times of you know nothing happening, right? You go to D.C. There's Afro beats everything, mm -hmm. everywhere, <laughs> all the time, and you know if if you just want something to do, you know that there's things with that thread tied to it. So you you never in, in with, without. Yep. So and, and I, I would say, and I, I want to see, you know, I don't want it to be like we're here talking about, well, we need more parties or we need more <laughs> bars. I don't think that's the point. I think the word that comes to mind here and everything I've heard so far is, is, is balance. Mm -hmm. People are full human beings. People, people want to, well, they're, they're multifaceted. Mm -hmm. They want to do different things. Right now, the, 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 the status quo is that folks come, they go to work, right? They come back home and there's nothing else to do. There's no other place to expand that energy. There's no, there's nothing else that feeds the energy, so they get bored real quick because it becomes the same thing over and over and over again. And even if you do find these other things, it takes a lot of intention. It takes a lot of effort. I know how how, many, how long I actually spend on the phone scrolling, like mm -hmm. what's going. Mm -hmm. I go to Eventbrite. I go. Right? <laughs> these things fall on you know falling on laps in in, 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 in other places, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And I think yeah. that's 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 that, that's a big thing. And and you might say, hey, there, there's concerts happening, and but are they happening around black indie? And what's the marketing for? What is the mark? Who are those for? Because I've seen a, a lot of folks who have told me, well, you know, you can go go over here, or you can go over there, but is that when I go there, do I see myself? Do I see myself reflected at me? Mm -hmm. Right? Do I feel like I want to be here? Mm -hmm. Right? I don't, I don't get that. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, before we move on from this, is there a recommendation on improving black culture, the black cultural experience in Indy? I would say we need a for the culture strategy. <laughs> yeah, I think we can all yeah, agree I like, with I like that. The for right for the culture strategy, yeah. exactly. A for it, the culture strategy. It, it, it can be a strategy for for everybody. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. You've got to realize that you, when it comes to this different diversity groups, there are very specific things that cater yeah. to their interest and their their sense of balance. And so, it, for the culture strategy, yeah. what's going to get you know folks out here? Small businesses. What do we do? What is the city doing? What are corporations doing to actually help these small businesses or minority-owned businesses to actually survive? Mm -hmm. Right? It could be something as simple as you know, we do uh, uh, Industry Friday mm -hmm. that's sponsored by Lily mm -hmm. or sponsored by Cummins, mm -hmm. right? But it brings people together. Yeah, right. There has to be some variety <coughs> tied to it, is what you're saying. There has to be. There has to be variety. We've got to support the, the local business owners that are here because mm -hmm. they're the ones that are going to. Uh, 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 generate the culture. Yeah. So we've got to all figure out a way to support them and help them do that. Right. I do want to plug, you mentioned a resource that you found earlier. You want to talk about that a little bit? Oh, on uh, visitindy.com, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there's a, a tab where you can directly uh, access just the black community in general in Indianapolis, uh, a list of all black owned businesses, restaurants, uh, the black culture that is here that you can experience when it comes to museums and doing extracurricular activities mm -hmm. of that nature. Um, I'm losing what else I saw on the yeah. website, but I was kind of surprised to see that just in doing research for today, um, going to visit indie.com, it was available there. Sure, and I, I think we were surprised. We didn't know mm -hmm. it was there, so like, how do we... <laughs> promote that better mm -hmm. you know and like I said I do a lot of scrolling so <laughs> I scroll through that. Visit Indy a lot of times and I, I did not run into that so you know thumbs up to, to Visit Indy for doing mm -hmm. that for sure. but again it's like how do you put that out there mm -hmm. right. right how do you make it more visible like I was driving down downtown I'm not seeing billboards or anything mm -hmm. I don't see yeah. people who look like me smiling mm -hmm. yeah you might might be a, a hoax somewhere else, but still, it makes me feel good mm -hmm. when I see a black face mm -hmm. and a big billboard sure. smiling at me like, yeah. oh, this is comfortable for, mm -hmm. for, for us. Yeah, I belong so, here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the other question is, who, who, what who is knows? indie? Like, who is indie? Yeah. You know, who, who, who are, what, what is black indie? Like, what does that look like? What does it feel like? You know, in some cases, what does it smell like, right? You know, like, what, what, is, what is that? Um, how do we identify who we are so that we can build, again, culture around that? So that you know, again, when we when we have people come in town, we're able to say, "Here's all the things that 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 you know we're known for that we love to do as a community." 
Um, and that are available to you too, are, right? right? We got March Madness here. Yeah. What is that, every year? Right? Every five. Every five years. Yeah, okay. four or five years, something like that. I can't so remember. what's available to the spectators outside of March Madness yeah. when they come outside? Like the mm -hmm. yeah. black community visiting Indianapolis, when they step outside, what are they saying? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you had what's events available? like, you know, Indiana Black Expo and Circle City Classic, which were kind of our staple events um, that are no longer our staple events. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we want them to be. And you know we, we're always you know I feel like everybody's you know always rooting for them and, and wanting it to be what it used to be in the 80s and the 90s and 2000s early 2000s at least, mm -hmm. um, but you know we don't have those signature events that are ha drawing people from a, a, around the country and, and the world. Yeah, good point. So we need a for the culture strategy, strategy. I like pulling that. out all the yeah. powers that be. Yeah. When they, I think they call it black <laughs> agenda and politics. <laughs> what we're talking about is a for the culture strategy. Yeah. So that just put a pin in and that. And hold someone too. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. I want to shift. Well, hold, hold each other too. I mean, it starts with us. I mean, mm -hmm. if 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 it's if it's for us and we drive it, yeah. the money and the opportunities and resources will follow. Yes. I mean, at the end of the day. Yeah. Before we started CARE formally, and, and after the killing of George Floyd, one of the things that me, and myself, and many of my leaders did is we, we talked to black employees throughout our organization, and, and actually in our community too. And I learned a lot from that. One thing I learned is that our experiences are not the same. As a white person, my life in the United States is not the same as theirs. And it's not the same in some really, really personal ways. And I learned that their life is being impacted by this ongoing systemic effect. It wasn't just the personal behaviors of a few people. It was everywhere. We have to bring ourselves all together, bring our talent, our resources, our thinking, our creativity towards dismantling a system that hurts our friends, hurts our neighbors, and hurts us most of all, and change it. And, and great to know that we need to change it. Now what to do? And that's really was the birth of care. Cummins has a long and proud history of being a leader in business and industry on important social issues. And the care program certainly adds to our legacy. Cummins has always had a history of investing in the communities where our employees and their families live and work, by now investing in African-American businesses, by helping to empower them to grow, to thrive, and to be sustained for the long term, we're not only empowering these businesses, but we are helping to create more inclusive, empowered communities that these businesses serve. One of the most important things that CARE has done is to create programs that not only help to create equity in the communities in which Cummins does business, but to create an awareness among the Cummins family internally about bias, about equal access to opportunity. And I do believe that as we go forward, it will be a competitive differential for the company. I believe that it's important for us to be involved in CARE because Cummins is a good corporate citizen and we talk a lot about how important it is to lift up our communities. And there are many people in many of our communities in which we're located in who are suffering. So the CARE initiatives have helped us be proactive and engaged in those communities. You know, I've been focusing my work on the social justice, the community side of CARE, and of course I'm partial to the work that we're doing in our communities. I think the volunteers who have come together all around the United States and in a number of care communities have made an enormous impact already in the areas of wealth building, um, equity and home ownership. Um, police reform has been incredibly effective, especially here in Indianapolis where we've really been a significant part of the conversation. So there's a whole array of social justice issues that I think we're, we're beginning to tackle and I feel very optimistic about. Through the one year mark, the area I believe we've had the biggest impact is helping small black owned businesses survive the pandemic and associated economic lull. I think CARE has made the most impact in two unique ways. 
One, it's given our employees an opportunity to engage in the communities and areas in which they feel committed and passionate about. And then secondly, it's also made us look inward at what we can do better for our employees at the company. So I think it's had both an external and an internal benefit to be working on CARE. I'm really proud of what we've achieved with CARE. There's no question that we've got a long way to go. Uh, the more we learn, the more we want to get done. But I'm so impressed with the volunteers, with the programs that we've run, the things that we've learned, and the businesses and community organizations that we've impacted. And we already have 150 volunteers from Cummins involved in care. We've already placed $21 million from Cummins into organizations that are benefiting our communities of color and countering systemic racism. We've also helped 311 different black-owned businesses with small loans, with equity, with financial counseling, with support. So this impact has already spread widely. We're, we're influencing state houses. We're influencing police departments. So the talent, the energy, the resources that Cummins can bring to this issue has all played out. And I, I just, all I can say is thank you. I'm so grateful to the people that have done that, and I'm really proud of what we've achieved. I am so very proud of our team members, of the employees who are volunteering their time and making a difference in the communities where our programs have been launched. It's important to remember that change takes time. It's a journey. So hang in there and thank you for demonstrating that you care. How do you guys view the term corporate responsibility and are we really are we really living that? Sorry, that one's on the list. I just kind of <laughs> <that out. laughs> TJ brought brought it up a little mm -hmm. bit. Look at how they set me up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that there is a specific definition of corporate responsibility that a lot of corporations are working with. I do not think that, you know, helping to, to economically, you know, build this ecosystem that allows people kind of to, 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 to want to stay here is within that yeah, definition. Right. It's mm -hmm. right. I, I think corporate responsibility should be, at least I know in Cummins we say it, it's making sure that our, our communities where we do business in yep. are successful. Mm -hmm. And I think what we need to start talking a little bit more is not just that high level. So what does it mean for that community to be, to be successful? Yes, great schools. Love it. Let's do that. Right. Let's 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 help uh, 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 you know donate some money for for young individuals to be to be successful. But what else is there? How are we again? How are we supporting the local businesses? Mm -hmm. Because the local businesses are the ones that are going to create this ecosystem, this culture. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are going to bring people yep. out. <coughs> mm -hmm. Right. So that yeah. that's my off the cuff. Haven't thought about it. Response. It was good. It was good. Yeah. I feel like we're running close on time, so I want to just get the last two questions. I'll ask one, and then we'll come back to the second one. So if a closing thought, um, what would you say to the city? It could be the government, it could be organizations, it could be large community organizations. What, can, what should they do to better attract or retain black people in the city? I mean, I, I think it comes down to supporting them and making them feel like Indianapolis is a space you, you want to be a part of. Um, again, I, I keep hearkening back to diversity and leadership because it's you know, really what I know. But um, you know, one of the interesting things is you have companies who are like, yeah, I'll support, and I'll give you, you know, $50,000 to support somebody going through your program, but we don't have none of those people here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it makes it, you know, kind of interesting. You, you want to challenge them, but you're like, okay, I'll just take your money and I'll find somebody. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, with, with what we're trying to do, um, it, it, it allows the, the community to be a part of advancing the individual. Mm -hmm. And the individual kind of, again, just getting into some of those rooms that they're normally not privy to. Um, you know, we've had great experiences with High Alpha. Again, mm -hmm. Jimmy with the Motor Speedway, he's done a phenomenal job of really indoctrinating and, and inviting our community into that space, a space when I grew up, you know, I lived on, you know, near east side, and it was around Memorial Day, you don't go to that side. And not until I got in an accident with the guy on the board did I even get invited to that space, you know. Um, and then, <clears throat> you know, so, so how do we, how do we, 
invite you know black Americans, black you know people in Indiana to 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 engage in some of the spaces that are there, um, so that we too can be proud of some of those things. I mean, I think living somewhere else also helped me be very proud of of Indianapolis. Uh, you know, Pacers, Colts. You know, in, in the sports are, are very easy to to recognize. Uh, but some of those other things, inviting people to, again, Black Expo was Black Expo and, you know, Circle City Classic and so on. So, uh, that, 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 I mean, you know, I, I don't know that there's one answer, but, I mean, it starts with culture, mm -hmm. defining that culture. Who, who, who are we as a community? Who do we want to be as a community? And then how do we build things around it, like, like TJ said, to support the growth of that, that culture? Yeah. And to do that, I'm very structured thinker so mm -hmm. I was listening to what he was saying my thought would be find a way to take a post find out what the people want that are here find out what the people want that or would expect coming here mm -hmm. and then go from there to build that ecosystem that TJ has been talking about we're four individuals who've been throwing out our ideas mm -hmm. and we all want different things we've all had different experiences in Indianapolis as a whole like take that post find out what's missing from everybody mm -hmm. um, and then pull everybody together, all the companies, government, local, state officials, <laughs> funding to create that ecosystem. I think it, it's like a one step at a time kind of thing. Yeah, so what I, what I would say is for the city, for government, right, for the <laughs> folks who are running, you know, running the city, um, I think we said it already, you need a for the culture strategy, mm -hmm. right? You need to be very intentional about how you think about where we, how we position ourselves, are we even doing that? How do we position what Indianapolis is outside, right? And how do we support the, the, the minority businesses here? No, like really support, support the minority business that are here, mm -hmm. right? So that's what I'll, I'll say we start with uh, the city. For the corporations, recognize that there's 50%, right? 50% of people's lives, right, that you can support Right, you did. You did the first part. You brought. You brought them here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a significant role to keep them here, right? And you do that by again getting supporting uh, uh, things out there, <coughs> recognizing that yeah, the, the the lack of a social scene. I know we keep talking about it. It's, it's a problem, yeah. right? Yeah. So 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 we've got to do that. And then and then for the other thing for corporations is when when you talk to people about you know, coming to work for you, right? It's great, we, we do a lot of spills on, you know, Cummins is a great company, Cummins is an awesome company, I love working for Cummins, right? But we can also speak about this, the cities a little bit more than we do right now, sure. where we are, right? Because we are part of those communities, and if those communities are successful, we're successful. If Indianapolis was bigger than it is, we wouldn't be fighting for talent going to San Jose and San Francisco right now, right? Yeah. They'd be coming here. Yeah. And then for people like us, I haven't right? That question yet. Oh, oh, okay, I thought you, I, okay, my I, bad. I okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> but I will oh. say, just to add on to yours about building this for the culture strategy, and you talked about asking and getting a pulse. I think we have to make sure that we're including voices of all different types of yes. black people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it can't be the same mm -hmm. black people sure. Every at the table mm -hmm. all the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just want to throw that out there. So the second question is, okay. what can we as individuals do? And I'll start with you, TJ, because you're already on a roll. You're already, already on a roll. So again, you know, we we have a role, right? This thing is not going to get created for us, right? So I, I do want to give shout out to folks like Emil for you know power. I want to shout out you know Jeff and Kelly for being nimble. I mean, they've created something that's special, something that's unique. Mm -hmm. They actually have something with the uh, Black Innovation Week and, mm -hmm. and 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 Garden Party that brings people here. Like mm -hmm. I heard people talking about indie for the first time in many years that we're not from here. Mm -hmm. Like, what was this thing, mm -hmm. right? So 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 I think it starts with us. We gotta we gotta continue to support people like that, mm -hmm. right? We have to get off our couches. Right, when it comes to these organizations, it can't be the same people because what happens is that we burn out right. and we're like we're tired, right? Yeah. But if we keep meeting new new folks, new others like us, that gives us energy, yeah. right? We still, you know, we keep coming back; it becomes more vibrant. And then we got to stop competing with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. black indie is diverse, mm -hmm. but we're still black indie, mm -hmm. right? We live in the city; we, we we can all work and collaborate together to create a better, bigger black indie. Mm -hmm. So those are my five cents. 
my five cents would be um, taking ownership. Like, I know what my experience was like, so helping someone else. Like, Same. my involvement in Lily's ERG, uh, the black employees at Lily, um, whenever we have new black employees coming in, interns, full time, coming from grad school, I'm like, hey, you know, have you been to this place? Have you been to this place? These are the things that are available that I discovered that would help you kind of decide on whether or not to stay here. Mm -hmm. So I think taking ownership in, in that type of way and being, you know, inclusive, uh, letting people know I'm going to this place, I found out about this event, I think it will be something that you might want to pull up on mm -hmm. and experience for yourself. Uh, just bringing that awareness. Um, I'm the least uh, involved in, like, Instagram and posting and hashtags and things like that. Uh, but what I find out, I do kind of mm -hmm. disseminate. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I think taking accountability and ownership in that type of way, those are the things that I have been doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm learning from TJ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I would say, you know, continue, for, for me, it's continuing the work that we're doing with diversity and leadership. Um, I mean, we've had in, you know, three cohorts. We're launching our th third cohort in July. Uh, we've had almost 600 and something applications for the program. Um, and <clears throat> what, what's been interesting is of the 417 or so that we have for cohort three, 58 of them are, were not in Indianapolis when they applied. And so it kind of speaks to, you know, people who are coming here are looking for ways to connect. And so, you know, I'll, I'll keep doing that work, uh, but you also have programs like, you know, the one that Caroline Mays runs. You have the program that Joy Mason runs. I mean, you have Inno Power here. Um, you know, a lot of us are doing really good things for, for the culture, for our community, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, doing what we can. Uh, it's important that we continue to support these and, and push our companies to support these efforts um, because this is what's going to drive people to want to be a part of, of our city. Yeah. Um, you know, each one of us plays a, a small role. Um, and, you know, one thing that I, I'll, I'll give Zanae a great credit for is she's a connector, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's power in being the plug. Um, and so she, you know, she, there's never, I've never been in a, in, a, in, a, in a room and she's not, hey, Leon, you need to talk to this person. You need to know this person. You need to be with, around this person. This is what you need to know about this person. So you never, if you, you know, you, you're, you're with Zanae or you're, you're connected to Zanae, you're always in the room and you know what's going on. You know what's, you know, who you need to plug into and that kind of thing. So she's been, you know, very good, <laughs> uh, very good about, um, <laughs> about, about, you know, she sets you up for, for success, mm -hmm. and you always come out like, man, you know, I'm, I'm glad she was there because, you know, she, I, I was able to connect with people and find out things about people that I wouldn't have known that, that helped me connect with them. So I, I would say, you know, just just be us. I mean, Hoosiers, you know, we have hospitality. We're very much about, you know, each other naturally, and so you know, continue to to, to be who we are um, naturally, and and you know, I think we'll be okay ultimately. Yeah, thanks for saying that. Um, I think for me, I would just tell people, just be intentional about creating spaces. And I, mm -hmm. it's easy to say there's nothing here for me or um, Indian is <coughs> boring, but I, I would just ask people, don't give up on the city. I think if we can be intentional as individuals in creating spaces for ourselves and for each other, um, then we can kind of help build it from one perspective while also using our voices to challenge the powers that be in our institutions to create spaces for us as well. So thank you to our panel. Thank, thank you. you guys for thank listening. You. Thank you, Inno Power, for this opportunity. And now you'll hear from one of our sponsors. Innovation requires working collaboratively with multiple internal and external stakeholders. Aligning these relationships on the outcomes each entity contributes to create value is crucial. Yet until now, a tech solution has not existed that supports the holistic, value-driven collaboration needed to succeed. Enter the Business Value Network, a first-of-a-kind network that companies join to manage the expected value from their business relationships with customers, vendors, and other stakeholders. Built on a new computing paradigm broadly labeled as the metaverse, Organizations who join the Business Value Network establish persistent digital connections with ecosystem partners to align on strategic initiatives and monitor progress toward desired outcomes. Such transformative technology has unending use cases and applications. Consider, for instance, a Fortune 100 enterprise that is using MetaCX to manage a key environmental initiative. By tying numerous business relationships to the initiative, 
the business can visualize the impact each relationship has on outcome achievement, as well as understand the cumulative effect of an entire business ecosystem. The business and its various partners are able to come together in a co-owned digital space to align on specific aspects of the initiative, define mutual action plans, and monitor key performance metrics. Everything needed to ensure shared success is housed in one central location. How businesses work together is changing in a major way. The future is now, and MetaCX is leading the transformation. Learn more at MetaCX.com.